Well, good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. It is a Monday morning. That's why I need coffee now. <laughs> so, hey, I've got a good cup of Carolina Classic from Iron Brew. I've got the Word of God out. Let's read some scripture together and see what God has to say for us. We are walking through the Gospel of Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter 21. Come join me as we witness the triumphal entry of Jesus. Before we read about this, let me ask you this question. How does Jesus want to come into your life? A dramatic encounter where he just kind of uh, knocks you down, blinding light, shakes you, <laughs> wakes you, invades you. Uh, you know, a lot of folks believe that's what you must have if you're going to be converted to Christ. But I think the way Jesus entered Jerusalem is a prime example of how he wants to come into all of our lives, not as a wrecking ball, but as the Prince of Peace. That's the way he entered Jerusalem and offered himself to his people on this historic day. In Matthew chapter 21, beginning in verse 1, it says, When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, telling them, Go into the village ahead of you, and at once you'll find a donkey tied there with her foal. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say, The Lord needs them and he will send them at once. This took place so that what will be spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. The prophet he's referring to, of course, is Zechariah. Tell daughter Zion, see your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey. Not as, uh, by the way, a king might come with his army behind him, mounted on his horse, you know, an entirely different picture a picture of a different kind of leader. This is the Messiah to come. And it says, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So in verse six, we read, the disciples went ahead and did just as Jesus directed him. They brought the donkey and its foal and they laid their clothes on them and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. In other words, in the way we would think today of rolling out the red carpet for someone, that's what they were doing for Jesus, preparing the way. It was a demonstration of their faith in the person that's coming down the road. They understand who Jesus is way better than the religious leaders of the day. It says in verse 9 that then the crowds who went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Now, hang on for just a, a moment, because we've had this word in churches for years. Do we even know what it means? Hosanna is a transliteration of the Hebrew and the Aramaic, and it basically means the one who saves. So it's all about saving. They understood this person coming is a savior. Now, what they expected this savior to do is another thing. But for many who followed, and in John's gospel, recording the same thing, they mentioned the crowds who had come after the great miracle of raising Lazarus from the dead. And so many of those folks, they've seen Jesus literally conquer death. They've witnessed his power firsthand. They know this has got to be the Messiah. So they're saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Referring to him as the son of David is a messianic term. It's demonstrating their faith in the, their, their own belief that Jesus must be the Messiah of the Jews. He goes on to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. So this whole set of things that they are shouting all points to the fact that they believe Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is a Savior. He's coming to save. What better demonstration of faith could you want than this? And how about the demonstration of Jesus himself, not riding in in splendor, but instead coming in gently on the back of a donkey? It says in verse 10, when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in an uproar saying, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Here he comes. Here comes Jesus riding on a donkey. The Messiah is here. Now, what are we going to do about it? Now, those two things I want to kind of emphasize today as we read that passage of Scripture that's oh so familiar. Number one, Jesus doesn't invade your life, and he doesn't come in uninvited. He comes in gently. 
if you invite him in, he'll come in. He is your savior. He is your Lord. If you'll let him be that, he will come in and change your life. He's not going to beat down the door. He's not going to force his way in. That would not be God's way nor God's will. But he will show up. And when he shows up, he always accomplishes his purpose. He always demonstrates his power. He always makes a difference in your life. So please don't expect bells and whistles to go off when you invite Jesus into your life, but do expect there to be a real change. Invite him in, and he will gently enter your life in the person of his Holy Spirit, and he will begin piece by piece to change everything about you for the better. Everything that you'll put in his hands, he'll make better. The other thing I want you to notice is that Jesus is coming, perhaps with some folks who have unrealistic expectations of what he's about to do. Some probably expect him to raise that army, to run the Romans out of town. They don't understand that he's coming to die on a cross for their sins. They've not connected the Messiah with the Passover lamb. And because of that, many of them will be perhaps disappointed with Jesus in the coming days disappointed in the, the whole structure of government and disappointed in things going on all around them. And they'll be walking in despair for some time. Friends, isn't that the way the world works, though? If you look around today, there's a great deal of disappointment. Isn't there with all of us? Look at how we feel about our governments from the local level on up to those who think they're running the world right now. Could they be making any bigger mess than they are making? Every time someone meets from the G7 G7 to uh, some other group of economic folks like the World Economic Forum and, and all these world leaders that meet at the United Nations, it seems like every time they meet, they mess up something else. Oh, friends, disappointment is something that we live with in this sinful world. But I've got news for you, my friends. Here comes Jesus. And here comes Jesus, and in every time he has been announced and introduced to people, he's doing something that demonstrates who he is. Here comes Jesus, see him walking on the water, see him healing the sick, see him casting out the demons, see him taking power over nature, see him presenting himself as the sacrifice for our sins. It is Jesus who is not destroying our expectations, but Ultimately, when we see the flip side of it, the resurrection, we'll see that he's actually going above and beyond our expectations. So friends, Jesus is coming. But you know, the next time he comes, it won't be like this. We'll be getting to that in a little bit. Jesus will even be talking about it by the time we get to Matthew chapter 24. One day he's going to return as he's already presented himself in this day and age as the gentle savior that you can receive. And you can receive him right now if you've never done that before by simply praying and asking him and committing your life to him, becoming one of his followers. You can receive him as the gentle savior, Hosanna to the Messiah. You can do that right now. Or you can wait around because one day he is coming back, this time as the ruling king. To step in and say, okay, we've had enough of this mess that you have made of planet Earth, and we're going to straighten it all out now. He comes back then as a ruling king, leading heaven's armies, and friends, things will change quickly <laughs> in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. So friends, listen, take Jesus right now while you can, the gentle, loving Savior, who just as he rode into Jerusalem that day wants to ride into your heart and live with you, encourage you, help you make it through these days. He'll not disappoint you in the end. All right, thanks for joining me on a Monday. It is time to wake up in the Word each and every day. We're going to keep walking through some of these very, very important passages in the life of Jesus to see what he has to say to us. I look for you right here again tomorrow. If you haven't already, hit the like button or subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Hit the Rumble button if you're watching it on Rumble. Uh, like it, follow us, and that way it'll keep more and more people seeing Wake Up in the Word. God bless you.